Okay, hi. Um, call me Slim. My friends call me Slim. Um, I was driving down here today. I, I thought I was going to be late. I thought I'd get here like 1 o'clock, but I think I came here like 1.15. And so I was speeding, and I have this really lousy habit that nobody should do, which is texting while driving. I really want to stop. I really, really do. Okay, so I was texting, and I got a notification on Instagram, and I clicked it, and I opened it, and I saw this write-up. It says... You would underestimate the effect of one person. Or don't you underestimate of you, the effect of you as one person? Unless maybe you've slept in a room. I can't remember how they put it. Unless you've slept in a hot room with just one mosquito. If you underestimate the effect one person can pull, sleep in a room without an AC with one mosquito. And then you know how effective one tiny little thing is. Okay, so what I want to talk about today, um, I'm not going to sound all biblical. Um, I'm talking about something I refer to as ask and you will receive. Ask and you will receive. A couple of years ago, I was doing an examination in Latin ballroom, a ballroom examination. And my examiner was a Muslim from Lebanon. And he said, you Christians, he was so cynical. He was like, you Christians, you guys just say ask and you receive. You wake up in the morning and say, God, what should I wear? God, what should I drink? It depends so much on the spirituality that you have no individuality. That the concept of ask and you, re you receive is less spiritual than you think. For example, I want to drink water. Am I going to ask the bottle to you know, open up and conjure the water into my mouth? I'm not going to do that. I'm going to step down. I'm going to open the bottle and I'm going to drink. That action is the asking. In other words, he told me that ask and you receive is less than just saying, I want, I want, I want. It's doing the work it takes to get the job done. And some Christians find this difficult to, you know, to understand. But then they see some people who they refer to as unbelievers making it. And they are praying and struggling so hard. And they're still like, you know, dancing shocky while others are dancing, you know, smoother dances, stuff like that. So the concept of ask and you receive is really not opening your mouth to say, oh God, please give me. Or asking someone for something. If I want to ask this young man for his camera, he's probably going to say, no, this is my tool of trade. This is what I do. But then, if I could do something, if I could give him something that is worth more to him than the camera, he will give it to me. But there's no amount of cajoling I'm going to try with my, you know, my words. Even if I start dancing and singing or something. If I get a girl to do some belly dance by the side and I'm singing while she's dancing, give me, it's not going to work. It's not going to work. So... For those who are students, for those who are businessmen, for those who are office people, the concept is more about doing the work it takes to get the job done. I'm a professional dancer, I'm a martial artist, I'm a fitness expert, a choreographer, and a couple of other things. I want to go into photography too, so I might ask you for the camera later on. And I've started my own company, and along the line, I've realized how true this is. A couple of years ago, I was working with a girl who was in the Department of Law without diminishing any of the lessons and experiences I had with her. It was one of the most wonderful times of my life. At some time in 2010, we got into a rut where she said, she saw this video of two people dancing and she said, it's not here that you can become this good. Though. You have to go there. And I, I felt there was something wrong with that statement. But I wasn't smart enough to explain it to her. So I kind of blame myself. And she would just look at the video and she would say, you can't get this good here. You must travel abroad. You must go to Russia or you must go to France or you must go to London or somewhere. Maybe they're breathing different air or drinking different water. Maybe they're H2O. They use capital letter on the H. And we use small. I don't know what it is. But she said, you cannot get this good here. And I didn't believe her. You know her very much, don't you? She was the most stubborn girl I ever met. But wow, what an experience. And for four years, we struggled together as dancers and, you know, people trying to start a company. And when she made that statement, I felt like that was the end of our partnership. Why? Because when one makes a statement like, it's not here, you can become that good. If at that moment, God had pushed maybe Angel Michael with blessings to come in to meet you, and you just made that statement, you'd be like, shit, I have to go back. Even if God himself should take hand and put on your head and you say, you can't get that good here. There's nothing that God can do. You've tied his hands. 
he's tied his hands. And you don't have to pray. You don't have to be strong in spirit. You don't have to be Christian or Muslim or Buddhist or whatever. You just have to have some form of unity, discipline, and hard work. And you'll make it. So, immediately she decided we are, have to travel abroad. And I felt we haven't accomplished everything we can accomplish here. There's still so much we can get in this beautiful country. I love this country. So, I'm, I'm not so keen on going with that mindset. I want to go, but not with that mindset. But she says, no, we must go, we must go, we must go. And she left. And I stayed. Four years later, now, I have found what she went to look for. And she's in another country, still looking. In another continent, actually. Still looking. And I found it right here. And I wanted to refer back to the introduction in the brochure. It says the owner and the creator of... No. Yeah, I may be the guy who started the body language company, but my co-owner is over there. And my partner, Cora. And at some point, I'll be asking her to come and show something. Okay, let me use one of my typical examples. Assuming I want to have a dance with a girl. I'm using a dance scenario because this is what I know best. Or one of the things I know best. And I look at the girl and I speak French. Okay, sorry, I don't speak French. But I speak with some kind of strong, funny accent. Or maybe she likes Igbo accent. And I go, baby, can we dance? And she's enjoying the accent. That's what she likes. She likes guys with Igbo accent. And I go, mm, baby, man, mm, your eyes are so, you know. Can we dance? She's probably going to go, oh my God, I love his accent. As if that's what she likes, I'm just saying. And she would go. The next day, a guy is going to come. He's going to see the girl he wants to dance with. He's going to spray some perfume. He's going to adjust his shirt. He's going to take his hair, throw it to the back, check his shoes. He's going to walk up to her with a swag that she's never seen before. He's not going to say anything. And he's going to stretch his hand. And she's going to melt. Which one is ask and you receive? First or second? Actually, both of them. But one of them has a bigger effect. No doubt. No doubt. Right? Now you hear actions speak louder than words. And then some people come and say, but words go a longer way. Yes, words go a longer way. But actions still speak louder than words. So instead of opening your mouth and saying, I want this, I want this, I want to achieve this, I want to build that. I want to attain that. I want to pass this. Why don't you just keep quiet about it and do the work? Now, I know in a scenario like Unilag where you could work so hard. Oh my God, I was Unilag too. I started on engineering and I transferred and they put me in actual science from Bese to Bese. It was just horrible. Really, really horrible. I don't want to tell you my story, but it was bad. But I started dancing in my extra year, so thank God. So, <laughs> just don't ask. So, it was horrible. You know, from one place to another. You, know, you work so hard and you work so hard and you... And you you, oh my God, you stay awake till 5 a.m. reading the dumbest course like gas. And all your friends go out on a party that they call Salsa Night. And you, the one who loves dance, you stay behind because you want to achieve something. You're putting in the work. Yeah, 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 I know. And then they all pass and you fail. And you're asking God, Kilon Shele, what happened? Yes, I know. Sometimes situations are less than, you know, adequate and these things happen. But, these things will always happen. But you have to ask yourself that question. Not why did this happen, but why did this happen? That's a question. It's not a verbal question. It's mental work. Why did this happen? What am I meant to see? What am I meant to achieve? Why, I be, why am I being held back? Maybe I've not finished seeing everything I could see. Just imagine if I didn't get that extra year. What would have happened? Maybe I'll be working in the bank, maybe any some... I don't know, some huge salary or something, driving a fancier car than I'm driving, and all that. But I would have never met that girl over there. And I met her behind, just behind this building. That's a story for another day. So let's talk about ask and receive a little more. Let's picture a couple of people who go into a scenario and say, this is what we want to get out of it. This is what we want to get out of this, out of this situation. Now, what I try to apply is I don't speak about something I want to achieve. This is a lesson. I don't speak about what I want to achieve with anyone who can't add to it. Because once I speak, 
it gets mixed up with air, you know, oxygen, nitrogen, H2O with capital letter perhaps. It gets mixed up with all these other things and then it becomes watered down. For example, I want to take over the world. <laughs> and then I start talking about it. Someone else might just take my idea and start taking over the world. You know, it was annoying for me. I would write a story. I'll write a story. I'll say, oh, I should make this into a book. And then two, three years later, I see the concept being used in someone else's story who I told about. I'm like, hey, but that was my idea. I shouldn't have talked about it. I should have just asked, which is what? Do the work. Now, I'm going to illustrate what ask and you receive is. And this, at this point, I'll invite my partner in crime, dance, capoeira, business, and a couple of other things. Don't ask. I would invite her to the stage to physically illustrate what ask and you receive is. There is a beautiful lady, and I think you can all agree with me when I say she's beautiful. She's a dancer. She's a model. She's a singer. She's mine. <laughs> sorry, sorry. Okay, I'm about to take Cora here and lead her into a movement in a dance that we call the rumba. We call it a basic movement. I'm about to take her and you see what I'm doing? I just go like that. This is what I'm producing. How do you like it? How do you like it? We're walking together. It's nice, eh? I'm not asking. I'm telling. Now I want to ask. That's asking. For a lady in dance who is, you know, mature enough to understand the difference between A and B, A being this and B being this, you would understand that a man who wants to put her into a step, he's not going to use his hand. He's not going to use his chest. He's not going to use his leg. He's going to use his entire being to conjure up the question, which is, I want you to step back when I step forward, which is this. And then she responds. And she comes back. And then this way. And that way. And this. Now I want to turn around. I go this way. And she's here. And there. And she's there. She's still moving. And I bring her in. And I stop her with my body. And then we move. And move. And move. This is ask and you receive. Now it may look. Now, it may look like, oh, these guys must have practiced. They must have practiced and so on. But the truth is, for those of us who have gotten into dance, I've seen the difference between dance and dance. And there are forms of dance in Nigeria that up to 30, 40, 50 people do. But you find only like five or six people who do it properly. Why? Because they're going through the gruesome, annoying... What other word can I come up with? Process of getting it right. And this is the question I have asked. This is the question I urge you to ask. What does it take for me to get from this point that I am to that point that I am without, without speaking, without opening your mouth to ask and water down your actions? Ask and you receive. Do the work it takes to get the job done. Keep at it. Build on your product. Build on your product. Because the last thing I'm going to say is this. For those of you who are businessmen, for those of you who are working, for those of you in school or whatever, no matter how prejudiced anybody is, everyone always wants the best for themselves. So be the best you can be. Thank you.